if you put someone in fMRI and you're measuring glucose metabolism, blood flow in the brain, during a moment when they are not engaged in a task, you see the activation of a brain network with, uh, with, with some major purchase in the medial prefrontal cortex, the, uh, the posterior cingulate cortex, and the precuneus in the parietal lobe up here. Michael Pollan, at least, has called this the conductor of the brain's symphony. So the default mode network has a lot to do with the sense of self, uh, the integration of senses uh, that, that pertain to the self. It is essential for the projection into future and past. It is essential for uh, key functions of relating sensory experience to your own sense of, of who you are, who you is, right? So it could be that the entrance into a mode of stillness and, and the therapeutic relationship that allows stillness to transpire safely might be a way to get plasticity in the default mode network, to allow the default mode network to admit of new patternings. It may well be that inside of a therapeutic relationship or a ritual container, we create a frame where stillness can meet the conscious experience. And then our habituated sense of personal self begins to be more plastic and you begin to be able to feel things you weren't expecting to feel. So what might become possible in a mode, in a therapeutic mode of stillness, it might be that you can better connect pleasure to well-being. It might be that you can get out of habituated modes of pain processing. It may be that you can learn to feel experiences which were previously below the threshold of, of sensibility for you. So you might suddenly discover uh, a, uh, layers of your experience which, which are new. You know, sometimes I'll ask someone who's coming in who's in a lot of pain, pain that's loud. I might say, where does it hurt? And someone will say, oh, and they point to a broad region. As a therapist, as a body worker, there is nothing more powerful than for me to create a container in that moment before I try to do stuff to them, for them. If someone says it hurts here and it and just feels like they are awash in pain, the best thing I can do for them in that moment is to say, let's figure out the boundaries of this. So I create a still container and I say, now tell me, hear or hear more. And they will say, mm, more here. Here, yes, here, no, etc." And I begin to palpate and begin to just show people I'm not changing anything in terms of doing stuff to them. I'm just shifting their frame. Um, all of a sudden, they go from being in pain to having pain. It goes from a whole continent of discomfort to an archipelago of islands of discomfort. And the associated sense of crisis and despair begins to dissolve a little bit. That would not be possible if, I, if my own presence was noisy, right? So I need to be able to, as a practitioner, become the stretched canvas, become the, the, the tone arm that is still enough for both of us to engage in a new perceptual mode. You can learn to feel certain motions or certain oscillations, certain, uh, certain phenomena in the felt sense as a practitioner. But the most powerful thing to make space for, um, in my opinion, as a practitioner, 
is make space for stillness. So when you're the student trying to learn a manual technique, oftentimes your student ego is saying, am I feeling it? Am I feeling it? Am I feeling it? And that's a, that's a form of ego noise, which a good teacher will, will try to calm in you and say, you might be feeling it. Uh, or you might not be feeling it. If you feel nothing, stay with nothing. Stay with absence because uh, that can be powerful in and of itself. And my experience as a body worker tells me that stillness is not one thing. Stillness is a stratified phenomenon. It's a layered phenomenon. So there is stillness, and there is stillness, and there is, and there is. Your ability to drop in to different strata of stillness is one of those skill sets which everyone I know is engaged with for the duration of their career, the, the improvement of the capacity for you to... And you can feel it too. You can feel it when you are in the presence of someone who has developed their capacity for stillness. Something in you comes alive in that presence. Something is created in that absence. 